Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. Wait, that that's the wrong boat. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Ah, that's the right one, matey. Does Skull and Bones deliver on all its piratey promises, with fierce combat on the salty seas, thievery plunder, and most importantly, delicious booty? Or is it a soggy dinghy that will leave you feeling washed ashore? Watch on and find out. My name is Thorax, and this is Strategy for Busy People. If you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you what to play. Ubisoft's latest quote-unquote MMO is a foray into the pirating space with Skull and Bones. I've got just over eight hours in this game. I know that I often say that I love this and that or the other thing, but I must say I have a soft spot for pirating, mostly because of the tremendous quantity of playtime I have in the original Sid Meier's Pirates, as well as the 2005 remake. I've done the open beta pirate MMO thing before, although I can't remember what that title was called. It failed, so it doesn't much matter. How do I think Skull and Bones will fare based on my time with the open beta? I can't say that I've played many Ubisoft adventure games before, and I certainly don't play many MMOs. I find MMOs especially to be mostly glorified grocery runs. Microtransactions have made many of them even worse. The closest things that I could say that I have played are Far Cry 3 and Diablo 4. These are definitely not in the same league, but they touch on both the MMO and the Ubisoft-style adventure genres. So, one warning is that there probably have already been some cuss words in the background. This game is not bashful about laying into the pirate shick. So, if ye be a soft-hearted landlubber, you'll probably find yourself offended by many of the dialogue scenes with the main pirate guy in this game. And you'll need to be comfortable with him, because it seems like he is the focus of the main storyline in this game. That main storyline revolves around this pirate haven in the Indian Ocean. Like any good MMO, it is the home base of operations where you will do most of your shopping and crafting. As you might expect, a good MMO offers several playstyles to choose from. You can go the more traditional businessy, tradery route and buy goods in one place, transport them, and sell them somewhere else. You can, of course, do the pirate thing and just raid on the high seas. There is a mission board, a bounty board, and the recent de rigueur pop-up game events. The game thus far is entirely PvE. I even accidentally tried to cannonball a player, and it simply said they were immune. That doesn't mean you can't interfere with the other players, though. When you enter into combat on the seas with the NPCs, you don't enter some special combat area. It's pretty much a free-for-all, and it seems that you can swoop in on some battle that is occurring with another player, lob some cannonballs, and possibly even steal some of the loot. It wasn't clear to me if a loot drop from a destroyed ship is available to everyone or is simply first come, first served. That being said, the combat on the high seas is quite a bit of fun. At least with the early ship you had access to during the open beta, you have four port and starboard guns, and there are various types of weapons that each do generic damage and may have special damages that they apply. As you sail around, only the guns facing the aiming reticle may be fired, and there's some reload time associated. Do enough damage to a ship, and you could possibly get an attempt to board it with ropes that you have to carefully aim. Boarding gives the potential for extra cargo to be captured. As you navigate the seas, you can use your spyglass to identify ships. Depending on what missions you currently have in your backlog, you'll be notified when a particular ship has a cargo of interest. There is a fast travel option, but it does cost you some silver. I'm not sure what the real game drop rate will be like, but it did seem like I had quite a lot of silver without anything to use it on except for clothing. Wait, what? Yes, apparently, being dressed the part is important, as the blacksmith will straight up refuse to talk to you until you visit the clothing merchant to buy a silly hat and some proper pirating pants. As you rise in infamy, dressing in accordance with your stature seems like it might actually be important in the game, but it's unclear. Various missions will earn you cosmetic upgrades for either yourself, earrings, or your ship, a monkey, or is that a marmoset? I don't know. 
You can also purchase them. It looks like there are higher order currencies in the game, but I reached the maximum infamy level attainable in the beta and didn't encounter any of them. The world map does seem quite large, and as expected, the further you get from the starting port, the higher the level the ships you encounter get. One thing I was not sure whether or not I should be frustrated about was the whole blueprints come crafting thing. If you hadn't unlocked a blueprint, either through mission reward or encounter and purchase, you couldn't craft a thing. You don't just get to buy that cannon. For example, you have to craft it at the blacksmith or earn it through a mission. The higher level items require crafting supplies that come from further away, which makes them harder to obtain and or find. As you sail around, you discover trade routes that may have the goods you're looking for, although they might be in their raw state, at which point you can refine them at the refiner. I never got that far in this area, but that's okay. Maybe there'll be easier or other options in the real game as you get to the mid-game. Ship crafting goes the same way, but it does look like there will be interesting ship options as you progress through the ranks. There's also food crafting. Ship navigation has a quote-unquote maximum speed option which burns stamina, and there is also a bracing maneuver which can be used to reduce damage taken, also at the cost of stamina. Feeding your crew can restore stamina or grant buffs, like in many other games. But there is an interesting interplay between being able to repair your ship, which has a cooldown timer, and your playstyle and the types of buffs you want to attract. There is a fair bit of strategy here, and it probably gets deeper as the levels get higher. It's left to be seen. I didn't play with others in a group, but it seemed like the option was easy enough. Additionally, there were options to call for help, and other players could join in the fun. Supposedly, the difficulty of encounters will scale with the number of players involved. And, from the looks of it, there are different types of ships to suit different playstyles, like in other MMOs. One of the ships was described as a tank, while another talked about its special ability to aid other group slash party members. I did heed the call once and joined in on a plundering encounter of a local base, and also joined in a chance encounter against a treasure ship on the high seas. Before I give my final verdict, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share with your friends. Agree with me? Disagree with me? Or want to see other content? Let me know in the comments below. Want to try this game yourself? Check out my humble affiliate link below. And if you want to support me in making more of these videos, become a patron on Patreon. Your support really makes a difference. The Final Verdict Despite not being a huge fan of MMOs or even most of these types of adventure games, I did find myself sucked into Skull and Bones. The water physics is actually super amazing, and the game looks really good too. The weather is superb. The missions didn't get to feeling too same-same in spite of quite literally being same-same, and that's a good sign. Whether or not I could see plunking $60 down to grab this game when it comes out, I can't yet say. But they could easily expand the map, add new encounters or mission types, new cities, and go really far and away places with it. And heck, they could add PvP at some point. And they legitimately have sea shanties in the game that you can call on command. And they're actually really good. Just listen for a minute. On my trademark three-point score scale of avoid, meh, and I forgot to eat, I made some shark stew, gathered my crew, and settled in for the mission I knew we needed to do. If you enjoy that rhyme, you'll probably have a good time playing Skull and Bones. Because I skipped lunch to do that. Shakespeare, I'm not.